Let's worship the Lord together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good to us, and we worship you. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a tremendous honor it is to be here. And uh, I think I'm just going to try this one. I think this will probably be the best. Praise the Lord. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. I love Brother and Sister Garza very much. And uh, all that they have done for the kingdom of God. I thought about it earlier today that uh, there are some flyers I don't want my name on. But I'm happy to have it on this one. Because I love Brother and Sister Garza and what they stand for. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not trying to be uh, crass when I say that. I'm, I'm being honest. Because in this hour, there is so much going on. And it is a pleasant feeling to be around men who don't change. Ever. And I thank God for that. Praise God. And all the years that we have come to this meeting and been honored to be invited to come. And I feel like Brother Hearn today, it's a wonder to be invited. It's uh, quite astounding to be invited back again. <laughs> and here we are. And uh, I have prayed early this morning and then this afternoon that the Lord would help me to be a blessing to this conference. And I certainly was challenged by the Word of God today. Both Brother Hearn and Brother White uh, blessed my soul. And uh, what I have tonight just, I guess, adds right into what they're preaching. I'm, I'm not trying to add anything to it. I can only preach what the Lord lays on my heart. So that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. Uh, we were not able to be here last night, but I'm sure that Elder Garrett did a great job, and as he always does, and and uh, to be with our elders on the same ticket. Brother Johns and I are the youngest of the group, and uh, I know you knew that, but uh, all the others that have preached so far are older than us, and we submit to our elders and uh, appreciate them very, very, very much. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, good my fellow in tribulation brother white uh, he will attest to you that if any of you need a ride to the airport just ask me i'll get you there praise the lord <laughs> now, that's a long story that's a long story that i don't have the time they said that uh, somewhere in the middle of my message tonight that it would be the middle point of this conference so the way i've got it figured about 11 o'clock tonight we'll be in the middle of this conference <clears throat> Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm looking at this watch right here, and it's my body says it's almost 11 o'clock. So uh, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to manipulate my mind to get beyond all that. But how many are going to help me preach the word of the Lord? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I told Brother Caleb West today when I came through and was... Uh, <clears throat> bothering him just a little uh, in the lobby and uh, had some printing to do and I came back with a stack of pages that I have with me tonight and uh, I told him to uh, uh, to look out because I had a lot to preach and he told me he'd bring his pillow and I don't know if he did or not but I told him to bring me a gallon jug of water and we'd be even praise the Lord it's good to be here and uh, I hope you do have a little time. I did bring a lot with me, but I'm only going to skim the surface. I don't have time to preach everything that I brought. I do feel something boiling in my soul. And I want to deliver that. And I want to please God. More than anything, I want to please God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to go with me in the New Testament. I'd like to go to the book of Romans chapter number 8. After we read that. Uh, then we will uh, allow you to be seated, and I'll read some more in some other lengthy passages. Praise the Lord. I'll take as much monitor as uh, you folks can give me back there. Praise the Lord. It's all right, Brother Fraser. You can come right on in. I've been looking for you. All right, come right on in. Praise God, my good friend. Romans chapter number 8. 
Romans chapter number 8, and uh, I want to begin reading with verse number 6. If you're there, say praise the Lord. Lord. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Of God. Would you pray with me now? Jesus, I am grateful for the Spirit of the Lord that I feel. I thank you for the anointing that I feel boiling in my soul. I ask you, Lord God, to loose us tonight and set the Spirit of God free in our heart. Let the name of the Lord Jesus be lifted high. Let the power of God be demonstrated. In the name of Jesus, we bind every foul spirit that would hinder the Word of God. Loose your people tonight and set them free. Let the name of the Lord Jesus be exalted. And oh God, let the enemy be destroyed is our prayer. Let your anointing break and destroy the yoke. I ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord together. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your voice to God and let's worship the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're good and great and wonderful and powerful and precious. To you be the glory and the honor and the praise for all things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. you. May be seated. I would also like to read in the first chapter of the book of Romans. And in this chapter, I guess uh, I have in my little notations in Bible study, in my Bible, I wrote there the return to the animalistic nature. But in chapter 1 and verse number 20 is where I want to begin reading. The Bible declares the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made to corruptible man and to birds and the four-footed beast and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own bodies or their hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Even for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men working with men that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Now that's not very common to be read today, but it's still in the Bible. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. If I say not convenient. And then it begins the long catalog and the lists, uh, uh, the, the, the Bible's TV guide, I suppose, about everything that uh, is against God. Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, biter, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. This is our generation today. I want to just preach to you, and I do feel this burning on my heart. I wouldn't bring it to you if I didn't feel like preaching this tonight. But I'm going to talk to you on this subject, the insanity of sin. The insanity of sin. I believe that we are living in the last of the last days. I do not say that with an apologetic nature. I am not here to duck my head and just say it cloaked with some kind of superficial humility. I have come to let you know that I believe that if there is a time that we have our work cut out for us, it's now or never. This is the hour that we must have an apostolic move of the Holy Ghost. A sovereign touch of the Spirit of God. This is no time for dead church. This is no time to play church and play religion. This is no time to be a hypocrite. This is no time to sweep things under the rug. This is not a time to act like we've got our act together and not have it together. This is the hour we need to get a prayer life and get a fast life and learn how to pray and seek God and touch Him. Hallelujah. Our world is steeped in iniquity. Everybody say praise the Lord. It is steeped with iniquity. And I use the word insane or insanity, which uh, this comes from the dictionary, persistent mental disorder or derangement. It uh, is an unsoundness of mind, sufficient in the judgment of a civil court to render a person unfit to maintain a contractual or other legal relationship or to warrant commitment to a mental health facility. And how many have we known through the years that have committed some heinous crime and uh, get before the judge and they uh, are declared innocent by reason of insanity? Somewhere they have a clause because uh, they claim they got a screw loose or they're not wrapped too tight or their elevator don't go all the way to the top. And, and on and on the little per proverbial things go uh, sad and, and uh, they snicker and they let them out on probation. But the criminal mind continues to operate in its devious habits. This is not the time to go around and blame everything on the devil. I know the devil does a whole lot. But a lot of times it's just we haven't made up our mind to do what we're supposed to do. We are used to low life living. This is not the time to live as close to the world as you can live. This is the time to climb up a little higher. Add another fast day. Pray another hour. Read another chapter. Memorize some more scripture. And be pleasing to the Lord our God. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. Before I get to the end of this message tonight, you may be seated. I, 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 I'm, maybe, I, maybe I'm just spilling the beans before I get there. What we need is an absolute apostolic Holy Ghost showdown. We need to learn how to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, worship in the Spirit, preach in the Spirit. Nothing less is going to get the job done. Praise God. So much to say, so little time to say it in here. But Lenin used to think, and this is what, Lenin was the man that was over the Soviet Union for so long. He thought that those who believed in God were worse than fools. He said, and I quote, every man who occupies himself with the construction of God or merely or even agrees to it, prostitutes himself in the worst way, he wrote. And uh, that's the reason why whenever they would pick them up and call them away and call them away to concentration camps, that they would be told that they were insane. 
Because in his mind, anybody that believed in a higher power, anybody that believed that there was an invisible God that could do anything, was beyond his comprehension. There is something that is blinding the minds of men in this last hour. Men have gotten all kinds of philosophy and all kinds of psychiatry. And they have tried to bring that across the lines of religious Christendom, if you will. And it has even got in the apostolic church where we try to counsel the devil out of problems. And we try to uh, try to uh, just say the right words and so that we're not being unruly or crass or nasty. And we just hope that they can get the message. But what we need in this hour is for an anointed man of God and an anointed church, anointed church to stand together on the foundation of the truth of the word of God. And learn how to cast out devils. And draw some lines of demarcation. This is the hour that the church should shine its brightest. Oh yes. Hallelujah. This is not a time for watered down, soaked down church. This is a time for it just to get as hot as it can get. To get as straight as you can get it. To say it as plain as you can. The world has got to hear it. The lost must hear it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Everybody said, praise the Lord. One man said it this way. You cannot play in with the animal inside of you without becoming holy animal. You cannot play with falsehood without forfeiting your right to truth. You cannot play with cruelty without losing your sensitivity of mind. He who wants to keep his garden tidy doesn't reserve a plot for weeds. And this is what's going on today in the hour of compromise, in the hour of blurred lines. May I preach to you just a little while tonight. In the hour when nobody knows where everybody's standing at because nobody wants to be offensive and nobody wants to draw a line and say this is where we stand on some of these issues. I'm sad to say that there are some weeds that are growing. There are some doctrinal errors that are running rampant among us and now we are having to deal with the damage and the wake as has already been said. Ah, what we need today is an apostolic revival that will let the man of God draw the these lines. Preach the man of God. Let him preach. Don't sit on him and make him work hard for it. Hallelujah. Let the man of God, God know keep the devil out of my life. Keep the devil out of the church. Keep the molesters out. Keep the adulterers out. Keep the homosexuals out. Somebody wants to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it. I'm glad somebody preached it to me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. When Jesus was crucified, He looked across them and He said, Forgive them for they know not what they do. There is something about sin that blinds the eyes of those who are perpetrators of it and those who get involved in it. It seems as though that they get so involved in the activity that they forget about the results in which it will bring. They forget about the terrible and horrendous seeds that are sown that will habitually and consistently work havoc in their life every day that they live their life. That's why Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. There is an insanity in sin that causes the mind's eye to be blinded to unrighteousness and makes them feel that for a moment, if they can get a moment's worth of pleasure, they can forget about what's going to happen in the days that are to follow. But you hear me now, your sin will find you out. And I will preach to sinners around here tonight. And I'm also going to preach to saints. Hey, this is the time to get rid of sin and to repent of your iniquity. And say, God, wash me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Get the iniquity out of my heart. Let me live for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are those that are so bent on iniquity that they play right in the hands of God or the devil. Because some folks, just they just sin and sin and sin and sin. And, uh, and God uses them for a negative example. You hear me tonight? Everybody in this room is going to be an example. It'll either be good or it will be bad. I made up my mind a long time ago. I want to be a good example. I want to do my best for God. I want to be a mentor to young men that will live for God. I don't want to be a casualty. I don't want to be shelved. I don't want to be sent to hell. And everybody shake their head in derision and say, My, my, I I hope I don't turn out like him. God forbid that anybody in this room would turn out that way. 
but that everybody can get a love for God. And say, Jesus, I want to be a worshiper. I want to teach the young people to worship. I want to help the old people worship. I want to be a soul winner. I want to get my influence in a positive manner. I want to play in the hands of God and not into the hands of the devil. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me to get this off of me, Lord. Oh, God, let the anointing be on this congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in Jesus' name, but there are some folks that are so bent on iniquity. You can line them up and you can tell them the the consequences. You can tell the drug addict if he keeps on snorting his coke and keeps on toking his joint that it's going to burn his mind. It's going to cause him some great havoc. It's going to mess up his family, but he can't listen to it. His mind's eye is blinded. His ear is deafened. He can't hear instruction. He is insane. And yet, at the same time, the devil doesn't even have to destroy some men because if he'll leave his hand off of them and just let them destroy themselves. Because a man left to himself will destroy himself. Because all he will do is pursue the sinful pleasures of the momentary time. But that's not the will of God. The will of God is that he will deliver. I feel like I'm preaching to a sinner that's here tonight. And you're tired of iniquity. You're tired of smoking cigarettes and selling your body for pennies. You want to live for God. You want to turn it around. I've got great news for you tonight. There's salvation in this house. There's Holy Ghost in this house. And you can get it before you leave. Woo! Hallelujah! It'll change you from the inside out. It'll change your way of thinking. Thank God for salvation. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 15, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. And that's the way it is with men. You leave them alone. You don't let a preacher preach to them, and they'll destroy themselves. That's why every time you hear a man of God crack open his Bible and read the sacred scripture to your ears, you need to be on your feet and think, Thank God. Thank God. Let him preach to me. He's going to save me a life of heartache. He's going to save me a life of horrible consequences. Consequences. Preach to me, man of God. Let the rod come down on me. Get hell out of my heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And the same scripture again, reiterated in Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Somebody shout death. It's the ways of death because when you sin, it's going to get you. It's not if, the question is when. It's not maybe it will, the question is when is it going to take its final toll? And where will it find you at? I'm glad I'm sitting in this place tonight or standing up preaching to you, telling you that I serve a gracious God that loved you so much that He brought you here on this Thursday night that His Spirit can reach you and save you from your own self. I believe God wants to talk to us tonight. Let's worship the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. Praise God. So we find out that there, if there's going to be any kind of statute of, of knowledge that God's going to teach us and train us and order our steps, there has to be one foundational thing. And I could preach on this for an hour and don't have time and won't take the time. But the bottom line is that if God's ever going to teach you something, and if we're ever going to make anything out of our life, the Bible declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
You'll find that in Psalm 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Job 28, 28. He said, fear the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from un- evil is understanding. Proverbs 1 and 7. He said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the full conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let me tell you that if you're ever going to have any intelligence, You're going to have to learn how to fear God. There is a God. I said there is a God. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And I'm telling you that if you'll pray and reach out to God, God will hear your prayer. God will answer your request. He'll dry your tears, save your soul, and give you hope for your heart. Praise the Lord. People that don't have a fear of God have no way to build upon that foundation. That's the reason why all this crazy stuff's going around. And there again, I'm just going to skim the surface. I heard it the other day. Uh, somebody was telling me the other day on one of the religious radio stations, and I think they were quoting from a CNN uh, situation there on the religious radio station. And uh, there was a scientist that got up and said, if we don't do something about global warming by 2050, he said, then we're going to have to move over to another planet by that time. And I'm thinking this man is a scientist and he's an idiot what do you mean move over to another planet this man's got a doctor's degree this man has had all kinds of education but he's a fool because he has factored the greatest thing about education in the life of mankind and that's the fear of the Lord when you put God into the picture there's a whole lot you don't have to worry about there's a whole lot of things that you ain't big enough to figure out fear the Lord fear the Lord put God first trust God with all your heart lean not into your own understanding Praise the Lord. This is, what, this is what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 2. Now, I'm going to preach a while tonight, okay? Since I'm the only one preaching tonight, is that all right, Brother Garth? <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. i got to work these burritos off. That's why I come to these conferences. It's the food. It's the food I come here for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest for her as silver and if thou searchest for her as for hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Because if you want to know about God, you've got to have a hunger for Him. No passive desire is ever going to find anything out of about God. That's why if you come late and leave early and you never pray, you're never going to know anything about God. But if you're really hungry for Him, you get to church early. You stay around these altars late. You read that Bible to the late midnight times and said, God, I want you to speak to me. God, I want you to show me something. Is there anything that I've missed here? Oh, when you hunger after God, you're going to find Him. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. I've never seen the passive ever receive a blessing. They're always waiting on somebody else to be the first one in the aisle. Always waiting for somebody else to be the first one to shed a tear. Always waiting for somebody else to be the first to stand on their feet and to preach the man of God on. But that hungry soul is just looking for the first precious opportunity when the man of God just said, Jesus is good. Yeah, he's good. That's the hungry man. And he's not going to leave the sanctuary of God's house without his bucket of joy being running over. Hallelujah. The soul who gets the Holy Ghost is the one who comes to the altar and they're not worried about being prim and proper. They're not worried about the buckshot sweat that gets out on their beady forehead. No, sir. The only thing that matters to them, I've got to find God. I've got to find God. I've got another touch. I need a change. I'm not leaving until something happens. That's the soul that gets the Holy Ghost. That's the soul that gets turned around. That's the soul that gets baptized with the Holy Ghost. I wonder if we got any hungry people here tonight. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. 
I'm telling you, my spirit's hungry tonight. You may be seated. The further on we go, I have found this out. And I'm coming, I'm cutting ahead of myself, but I'm going to come back and reiterate and echo this again in just a few moments. But I've got to the place by the pace that there have been times that I have said, God, I don't know how to pray. God, I don't even know how to preach. I certainly don't know how to pastor. I told Brother Hearn today, I said, I've often wondered how great a church could be in Wheelersburg if they had a good preacher up there trying to help them to find God. Because there's sometimes I feel like I don't know much about Him. But I want to know about Him, Brother Klon. I want to know more about God now than I've ever been. I've been preaching this gospel for 34 years. I've been pastoring 20 years. But that doesn't mean anything. i got to find Him. I want revival. I want a stirring in my soul. I want Him to help me. I want Him to stir my mind. I've got to have a move of the Spirit of God. We can't do it on hot air and well water. We can't do it on programs and music. We've got to have an anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I know these preachers on this platform tonight can agree with what I'm saying. I'm bone weary of going to conferences to where all they do is just skirt around issues. Nobody wants to say anything. Nobody wants to draw any lines. Everybody wants to be Mr. Nice Guy. And we all go home having a good meal of cotton candy. It was full and filling for the moment, but when you get out the door, you have nothing but a sticky taste in your mouth and nothing to take home with you to fight the devil and to do the work of God. But I believe that God's going to do something in this conference that's going to shake us, that's going to move us. We're going to hear the Word of God and we're going to take it back home and have a move of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus, we need it, we need it, we need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm not just trying to hype you up. I promise you I'm preaching from my soul tonight. I'm only preaching for what's coming out of my heart. Prayers that I've prayed in the nighttime and in the early morning and through the day. Ah, God, I've got to have a move of the Spirit. My city's got to have a revival. But this is not a time to go ahead and skirt the issues. They need now more than ever to hear the Word of God preached uncompromisingly. Woo! Straight as an arrow. With the authority that the Word of God has given the man of God to preach it with. I'm going to go a little further here. Just a few weeks ago, there was a conference held. Our church and a couple other churches went together. And we certainly do. Brother Frazier was there at that conference. And there was such a move of the Holy Ghost. It was outstanding. It was, it was unfathomable. And uh, I remember going home weary in body but refreshed in spirit after hearing the men of God preach the Word of God as they did. And uh, in my wife's college and career class, many of them were there. What a tremendous uh, anointing was there. And... Uh, in that conference and when they got back she asked them she said what did you like most about the conference and I don't have it in quotations but this is the main gist of it this is what every one of them said she said we didn't have to guess what they meant that's the cry of a new generation they're tired of wondering about stuff I figured that hurt somebody right there but I gotta preach it anyhow Our young people want to know what's wrong. Our young people need to know what a real move of God's all about. They're tired of the fluff. They're tired of it being a thimble deep and a mile wide. They're tired of the marshy swamps that breed all kind of bugs of sin. They want a river. They want clear water. They need clear direction. And that's what they need to get every time they come to our apostolic services. Woo! Hallelujah! I need deliverance. I need direction. I need some direction. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, praise the Lord. And so one of the man of God gets up and he opens the word of God. Some folks say, well, the man just shouldn't always be up there harping. And, and, and I know that. I know we shouldn't hack and, and cut all the time. But there are, there are times that that should be done. It shouldn't be that when they walk out, they get that philosophy that the world says. You know, if you're not saved to some extent, you may be lost to some degree. That's the way the world says. 
you know, you just, you know, just, just as long, just, just as close to God as you can, you know, just do the very best you can. No, they need direction. They need direction. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, yes, they do. And sometimes a man of God has to get up and get bold in the pulpit. Sometimes he has to stand people up. That should not be offensive to you. You need to thank God you got a preacher that's got some guts. Praise God. Now a whole bunch of you looking at me now, but I'm going to explain exactly what I mean. Praise God. In 20 years, there's only been a few times that I've had to go to that extent, Elder Wheeler. And I don't like doing that. My, my whole stomach just, just feels like it's rotting off and my blood pressure gets high and, and, uh, because I love people, but I realize I love people, but I hate sin and I love them so much to help them change. And every time after I've done that, I've stood them up. I thought, I don't know what the parents are going to do. Every, and every time, Brother Garza, the parents would come to me. The men would hug my neck. The ladies would shake my hand with tears coursing down their cheek. And they said, if you ever have to do that to me, please do it. But don't let me be lost. That's the cry of a hungry soul that wants to be saved. But the insanity of sin says, I'm going to hell, just let me go there. Don't tell me I'm doing wrong. I'll go somewhere else. It's insanity. Praise the Lord. You'll find in the Word of God, in the book of Isaiah 55, 89, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His ways past finding out. That tells me one thing. He's smarter than we ever can be. Brother White told us about that here today. Praise God. So we need to get our book out of Rick Warren's book on how to build a church. He don't know nothing about building a church. Does it offend you because I call names? I'm telling you, this is the time for the apostolics to stand up and draw some defining lines. There's only one way to be in the church and that's to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin and receive the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. No other gospel, no other plan, no other way. One God, one God, one God, one God. Jesus is His name. Not two, not three. One God. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. He may be seated in Jesus' name. His ways are above our ways. Matter of fact, he said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally to all men, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. James 1 and 5. So if you got need wisdom, ask God about it. Don't go to your psychologist. Don't go to the radio preacher. And don't go to Uncle Sam. That's one of your relative preachers. Go to your pastor. Now I know brother-in-law Bill, he's a pretty good guy, but he ain't your pastor. I'm sorry, I'm preaching hillbilly now. He isn't your pastor. Praise God. <laughs> Whoa, that old rebellious spirit, Brother Hearn, still stands up. It hates apostolic authority. But brother, if you need wisdom, let him ask of God. Why don't you get on your knees and say, God, lay it on my man of God's heart. And let him preach the word of God to me. And then when you get to church, sit on the end of your pew and say, God, speak to me tonight. Somewhere in this message, I know you're going to talk to me. Somewhere in the service, I know you're going to to direct my steps and you know what you'll get it you'll get your answer you'll get your direction you'll get your touch because you're hungry for it well glory to God glory to God somebody shout hallelujah praise God praise God 
Oh, Jesus. And I've told our people this before, and I'm going to tell you tonight, and i got to hit this touch it and pass on because I don't have time to preach on. But I told them, I said, when you come to the house of God, bring your Bible and bring a spiritual appetite. And get on there and just get your ears open and say, all right, Lord, speak to me tonight. And it doesn't matter if it's a Bible study Sunday morning, Sunday night. It doesn't matter if it's a 17-year-old evangelist that comes by. And he's not married. He's only been preaching for four weeks. Whenever he gets up there and he starts reading Acts 2.38. So well, I've heard that a thousand times. You missed the point. <laughs> Acts 2.38, number one, should rattle your cage and get you excited every time you hear it. Because that's how you get born again of the water and the Spirit. Never want to get tired of Acts 2.38. Never want to get tired of Acts 2.38. Praise God. But how many times in Bible study? And I try, I do, I really try to slow down, but that's hard to my gear. But the older I get, the more I like it. Trying to slow down just a little bit. And I'll be teaching the Word of God. And, uh, and I tell him, I said, this is what you listen for. The man of God's up there preaching. All of a sudden, he'll just stop and say, you know, I don't know why I'm going to say this. But I feel like saying that. That's the time. Get on the edge of your seat. The Spirit of God is fixing to give you your word. And you see, if you done got up to the bathroom about four times and went to the water fountain six times so you go back to the bathroom four times, you're going to miss your word from God. But what you ought to say, Jesus, I'm sitting here and I'm listening because I need some wisdom. I need some knowledge. I fear you. I need your direction. Speak to me, sweet spirit of God. And he will. He will. Because that's his way. Somebody shout, that's his way. May be seated. His word and the fear of the Lord will bring you to His word. His word will tell you how to get the best out of life. I don't want to be repetitious about what we heard already today, but He will give you the direction in His in His word about your marriage. I had one man come to me one time. He came to me several times, and finally I sat him down. I said, "Listen, listen." I said, "What did you do? What I told you to do last time?" He goes, "No, sir." I said, "Then you're wasting my time." He said, "Well, I was wondering why you didn't call me back." I called him up on the platform, let him sit in the chair. I said, there ain't no need wasting time back there in that counseling office. If you can't hear it when I'm preaching the Word of God with the anointing, then you're certainly not going to receive it back there in that office. He said, well, I can't understand my wife. I said, well, not very many men can understand their wives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! But you certainly ain't going to do it without the touch of the Holy Ghost. My wife is here and I love her deeply and we have some great communication. But I told him, I said, you know what your problem is? He'd come in off the street and, uh, and uh, he had married a woman that was out of the church and he was out of the church and, and they got married and they came in the church and both of them had baggage. And I said, you know what your, your problem is? I'm trying to give you the scripture and give you a Bible marriage and you keep following the street manual. I said, if you want a Bible marriage, then listen to me. But if you want a street marriage, then keep doing what you're doing. I have nothing else to say. The Bible will tell you how to keep your marriage together. It'll tell you to love one another. It'll give you directions if you'll just let it. Well, glory to God. Amen. Here in just a couple of weeks, my wife and I will celebrate 30 years together. Boy, you're talking about a miracle. God gave me a woman that put up 30 years with me. <laughs> Amen. Miracles are still happening today. The Bible will tell you about money. Everybody say money. money. Woo! It tell you how to pay your tithe. We heard about that today, so I'm not going to go into all of that. But I'm telling you, it's not hit and miss. Because if you hit and miss, you're robbing God. And He said, I've cursed you with a curse. Somebody needs to say that. It'll tell you about offerings. It'll tell you about giving. It'll tell you about your budget. It'll tell you about sacrifice. Woo! Dear old dad always told me, if you want to lock it down, son, he said, preach on prayer, preach on soul winning, and preach on giving. He said, it'll set him right back down to earth again. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I see that Papa told me the truth. Amen. But I'm telling you, the Word of God will give you the direction 
on how to take care of your money and your finances. Because if you'll put God first, He will take care of you. Oh, yes, He will. You want to know how to have revival? You'll find out the Word of God. It gives you the whole scope and sequence of how to have a move of God. I'm not talking about a slam bang and just jump around and see if you can find them driving down the street, count their heads, thumbs up kind of revival. I'm preaching to you about a revival that's a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost where the Spirit of God will change people. Take the cigarettes out of their mouth. Get the scissors out of a lady's hair. Give the men a good haircut. And a clean face. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise the Lord. I must hurry on. I've been preaching already about half your time. (laughs) Praise the Lord. We talk about the wisdom of God Solomon needed. He said, Lord, I don't know how to come in and go out. And when God gave him wisdom, he didn't have to go to you. He didn't have to go to you. What is it? UCLA? Is that right? He didn't have to go to UCLA. He didn't have to go to Harvard. He didn't have to go to Stanford. He didn't have to go to all the rest. But when God gave him the wisdom, the Bible said that he was the wisest man in the world. Brother, I'm telling you, God knows how to run his church and he knows how to put families together and he knows how to answer your questions. I said, God knows how to answer your questions. He's smart. We heard some of that today, so I run on. The Bible declares about Daniel. He found him ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers because he was great and wonderful. The Apostle Paul picked it up in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2. He said that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the knowledge of God. Because there's something about the knowledge of God that will show the light of where you're at. Our world is dark. They don't know what the light is. That's why they need the preacher, and that's why they need the church to stand with the preacher and they preach the wonderful message of one God Jesus name and Holy Ghost it's not by wisdom and I just want to scream it tonight why do we think we're smarter than this world why do we think we can get it out of a pulpit magazine I'm going to preach to you now those guys don't even know the oneness of God that doesn't mean I don't read I read books all the time Praise God. I read books all the time. Somebody asked me one time about a big old book years ago when I lived and was assisting my father in the Dallas area. They said, have you read all these books? I pulled out the white pages, about three inches thick. I said, I got halfway through and it didn't make sense. Praise God. I do believe in reading. I do believe in reading. Praise the Lord. Moving right along, moving right along, moving right along. But I do believe in reading books. I believe in being studious, 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 studious. I believe in sharpening my perceptive skills of my mind. But I realize that if I'm going to reach the, me- the, the people of my city and those that are messed up with sin, they're not concerned about how smart I am. They don't care. They don't really care how wonderful I can quote poetry. Mary had a little lamb. Or the way that I enunciate or I got the huhs and when I preach. That doesn't mean I'm anointed at all. Praise God. I can sling spit seven pews, but that don't mean I'm anointed. It may be going that far tonight, but I feel something burning in my soul. And I'd like to spit right in the devil's eye and let him to know it's not by power and it's not by might, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. Let's worship the Lord together. Woo! Hallelujah! I don't have time nor energy to preach everything tonight. Please be seated. Let me touch this and I'm running on because there's a place I want to end up. Psalm 119, 97 through 105, the psalmist David. Of course, Psalm 119 is, is a, great, a great psalm, and each every section it has, is, is actually given because everything started in those sections goes with uh, uh, the beginning letter of a Hebrew al- alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, all the way down through 
till all of them are, that's the reason why it's so long. And everything in the original Hebrew, in its poetic form, in its Hebrewic, Hebraic uh, poetic form, it starts with those beginning vowels or letters. And he writes these in poetic form. But as he gets to this one place, he is there's something that, that's the thread that runs through Psalm 119. And that thread that runs through Psalm 119 is, I love thy law. I love thy law. I love the word of God. Oh, he said, I love it. He said in these couple of verses here, 97 through 105, and I'm just going to give you a couple of excerpts. 98, through thy commandments thou hast made me wiser than my enemies. 99, I have more understanding than my teachers. 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. 104, thy priest, through thy precepts I get understanding. And on and on through that wonderful book that tells me that if you really want to have wisdom in this last hour, get your nose in the book. I know it was written by a a lot of men through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and it may be archaic to you, but it's still life-given and God-breathed. It's still inspired. It still does the job. And preaching it still gets the job done. I said preaching the Scripture still gets the job done. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. First John 2.20 But you have an unction one from the Holy One. And you know all things. How do you know all things? Because when you've got a fear of the Lord and you've got the Word of God in your mouth, then God can illuminate your mind at the right time. And all of a sudden the pieces, the fragmented pieces of your understanding come together and God gives you a revelation. And then you know what you ought to do in your marriage. What you ought to do with your children. Knowing that the man of God is preaching the Word of God. And it gives me light. It gives me understanding. Praise God. Now that's to the spiritual mind. Let me talk to you about the carnal mind. That's where our text came in. Now this is where I want to wind up. The Bible said the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Everybody say not subject. Not subject. To the law of God neither indeed can be so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is not of his. So without the Holy Ghost, you're not of His. you got to have the Holy Ghost to be in the bride. To be in the body. To be in the church. However you wish. Hallelujah. Praise God. Takes the Holy Ghost. Takes the Holy Ghost. But He said the carnal mind is enmity against God. Going back to the original language, enmity means uh, an enemy. Or it is against. It's anti-God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. And I got to study in, in, in uh, one of these Greek books that I've got. And I'm not trying to be pull rank or file over you. I do know a little bit about it, but I'm, I'm running on. But it did say there that what he was saying is that it was marshaled under another commander. Meaning the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God because it has its allegiance to another commander in chief. So you know what our biggest problem is in churches today? It's not really the devil. It's the carnal mind. Because I can cast the devil out in ten minutes. But it takes forever to get the carnal mind. To get spiritual. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm slowing down just a little bit. I'm going to explain that to you just a little bit. Praise God. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul said, he said, my preaching and my teaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the the Spirit and power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Because there's something about the power of God and the anointed Word of God that does more than a hundred theologians could do standing on 16 dictionaries. The Holy Ghost can do more in a moment than we can do in a lifetime. Study, yes. Prepare your heart, yes. But let the Holy Ghost use you. Because the carnal mind is it's not subject to the law of God. It means it's on a different plateau. So you come to church and you got half people that have been praying early. Man, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. And then you got another handful of folks and they're dragging around. And you say, come on, come on, come on. They're dragging around. I don't know. I don't think God loves me anymore. I don't think the preacher cares about me anymore. Well, 
it's not that the preacher doesn't love you, but he hates that carnal spirit. And every God called apostolic preacher should hate a carnal spirit. I'm going to preach this tonight. I'm going to preach it. Because it's burning in me like a fire. Hey, hey. Praise the Lord. Hate, I hate carnal. I hate carnal. I hate people getting up there and because they think they're so talented, they're going to move a congregation with their wonderful song. You know, play, and I love good talent. Praise God. I do. Praise the Lord. I love good talent. I play a comb. I know how to play. I know. <laughs> Praise God. I don't always sing through my nose. Sometimes I sing through my mouth. I love good talent. Please don't. Somebody think I'm throwing rocks. I'm, I'm, not, I'm only making a point. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to make a point here tonight. But just because that you can sing like Lanny doesn't mean you got the God of heaven behind you backing you up. Just because you can shake like Elvis don't mean you got the Spirit of God on you. Just cause you can twirl around like Michael Jackson don't mean you got the Holy Ghost. The carnal mind can't tell the difference. Can't tell the difference. Can't tell the difference. Because I mean, you know, boom, 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 boom. And God ain't nowhere around. But what we need is a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost. I heard it today. I heard the preacher say it today. I feel it in this auditorium here tonight. There's something going on at Faith Tabernacle in Madeira that the devil is afraid of. Somebody's going to get in the spirit. Somebody's going to get their mind straightened out. Somebody's going to get renewed in the Holy Ghost. Several years ago, you may be seated, had a dear sister in our church. We were off at camp somewhere doing something. We got back and, and uh, she had, uh, somebody had tried to work with her, whatever. And come to find out, whenever I got home, they said, Sister so and so, they called her by name, said, She's over in this hospital. I said, What's wrong with her? They said, They got her committed to the psych ward. Uh, psych ward? Yeah. So what's wrong with her? So I don't know. She just went crazy. Well, I said, well, we better go over there. You know, I said, that's one more to the flock. Better go check this out. So we walked over there and come to find out. And I'm going to give you the long end of the story at the beginning. And then I'm going to back back up here so I can, I can give you some reasoning why I'm bringing this up. What had happened to this dear sister is that somewhere, well, she had been fasting, and uh, she was a very thin lady, and uh, I, don't, I don't know all the details about the vitamins which she was taking or whatever, but she was taking some vitamins, and she went on this fast, and, and uh, it messed up some of her vitamin ratio, and also it made some of her hormones go crazy. And so... I, I walked and asked the nurse, I said, how is she doing? She said, she's just got some imbalances and she needs some vitamins to counteract some of the other vitamins that she took. And she said, but she won't eat. I said, really? And so I walked in, my wife and I walked in, and I said, praise the Lord, sister. You know, what else do you say to people that are crazy? <laughs> what, what do you say? Praise the Lord, sister. Ain't God good? <laughs> sure. Well, and I said, sister, I said, they need you to eat. I said, pastor, I can't eat. I'm on a three-day fast. And I said, sister, you, you don't need to fast right now. That's what's got you in this predicament. I said, what you need to do is to eat. Listen to them. When they bring their meal, eat it. But she said, I don't want to break my fast. Because when a person is a little insane, two plus two doesn't equal four. Right. 
And I would deal, I prayed with her. And my wife and I prayed with her. And I said, sister, go ahead and eat. I said, I'm your pastor and I'm telling you to eat. And she said, because you're my pastor, that soul inside of her. That soul inside of her that was submitted to me whenever her mind was on right. Said, okay, pastor, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. You know, she said, I'm fasting, but if you tell me to break my fast, I'll, I'll eat. She ate her meal and in 24 hours they released her from the hospital and she was back to normal again. You hear me now? That carnal mind is insanity. Preacher gets up and said, you don't need to be wearing that jewelry. And the carnal mind said, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Need to get rid of that television and that video. I don't see nothing wrong with that. You can give them 14 Bible studies, but sin sin has made them insane. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who do you have the problems with? You may be seated. I'm going to preach a while right here. Is that all right? It doesn't matter. I'm going to preach it on anyhow. It's a whole lot better. No, I got some folks backing me up. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know who you got problems with being faithful to church? The carnal. I don't see why I got to be at every one of them services. Why well, I think, you know, three services a week is enough. Two plus two don't equal four to their mind. You can give them scripture. You can call them in the office. You can give them all the line out. No comprende. No sabe. I, I don't. I don't have. I don't. I don't have a revelation about that. Don't have to have a revelation. It's what the Word of God has to say. I, 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 Pastor, I just don't see it like you see it. No, they don't see it because they're spiritually insane. I know y'all are tired, but I'm just now feeling good. <laughs> uh. Man of God gets up there and tells that corner woman, so that split up. I don't see why that split's a big deal. It goes below my knee. They're insane. They can't figure it out. Yeah, Jesus. You tell that corner mind to button up that shirt and quit showing off his beer belly. I don't see no reason why I need to do that. I don't see no reason why I need to shave. Carnal! Carnal! He's insane! I'm going to step out just a little further here. Maybe I need to preach behind these speakers about right now. Maybe seated. But I'm seeing young men come in here and spend hours on their hair trying to get it to look like they just got out of bed. And try to explain that to a carnal young man. He's just trying to get him a faux hawk because he wants to look sexy like all them queers walking the street. Y'all don't want me to preach. You don't want me to preach. Nah. What's wrong with using a comb and trying to look like God's creature? Oh, she not roll with that. They're insane. May be seated. The only thing, the only thing that saved this dear sister was because in her heart she really wanted to please God. And I said, Sister, you need to eat. So if you got a problem here tonight, what you need is a good spiritual diet. You need a renewing in the Holy Ghost. And then all of a sudden, after you shake your bobby pins loose and you shout that shirt tail out and you cry till you can't cry anymore, all of a sudden you say, I see what he's talking about. It makes sense to me. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord.
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, let's pray. Let's pray just a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Praise God. And our whole time, our whole time, Brother Hearn, we've tried to change people. And I believe in authority preaching. I believe in apostolic authority. I believe in teaching the Word of God. I believe in Bible studies. Brother Wheeler knows where I stand on all that. I believe in all that. I believe in sitting down cup of coffee. If you don't believe in a cup of coffee, then Diet Pepsi or something, whatever. Water. As you wish. Praise God. Sit down with them. Teach them the Word of God. But I found out that we have wasted good time and become extremely frustrated trying to get carnal-minded people to get spiritual revelations. It just don't happen. So you know what we do? Ha! We bring in the strobe lights. Da, 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 come on, work, work, work. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. How many worship services have I been around the country when I hear a song leader because they're not getting with they say, Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Where are we going? I'm not coming on till I know where we're going. If you're going over the falls, I'm not going. I know some of you think I'm just really rattling cages and I'm just really upset tonight. I really am not. I don't have any axes to grind. But you know, what's wrong with just letting the Holy Ghost take over? I told our young preachers in our church, I said, listen, if you really want the people to worship, don't drive them, lead them. You want them to shout? Show them what you want them to do. You want them to worship? Show them what you want them to do. And we're living in the last days. You may be seated. And I really, I feel like jumping, I feel like crying, I feel like doing it all right now. Because I, I've been raised in an apostolic atmosphere. I know what it's like to see people healed. People get the Holy Ghost. People line up, holiness being preached. And they never had to pipe up everything. They never had to hype up everything. So, well, you just don't believe in worship. Ha, huh, come check us out. you show you we believe in worship. We really do. I'm not being a smart addict. We do believe in worship. Praise God. One of the XYZ people told me one time, said, we don't mind your people coming to our rallies. Would you please tell them to stay out of the floor? I said, I can't do that. They said, why? I said, because I'm the one that taught them how to do that. I don't want to show them how to roll. Woo! Praise God, if I had a little space, I might even try a little rolling tonight. Because I ain't trying to impress any of you cats around here tonight. I just want to please God, that's all. And when the Holy Ghost gets to burn it in your soul, you don't give a rip what anybody thinks. Let's stand. Let's stand. Everybody stand. I don't know if I'm through preaching or not, but let's worship the Lord. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, 
Shabara Baka Shabata Lamanda Bashabaye Kiyon Lamanda Yolo Lamanda Boko Shabara. I love you, Jesus. You feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I, I feel it. There's an undertow of the Spirit that's going on right now. Some of you, a man, and I was talking about this some time ago, a couple of weeks, and, and there again, I'm, I'm just cutting it off right here. I feel like this is where the Lord wants us to stop. He said, could it be that folks that says they're struggling with the same issue, could it very well be that the reason why they're struggling with that same issue time after time is because they never really wanted victory over it and God slowly and incrementally gives them up to the sin they love so much. And really, they're not struggling at all. It's just they're carnal. And they haven't got them a prayer life. Because if they ever got spiritual, then these things that are carnal, that are so minuscule, would not be big deals at all. Tithing wouldn't be a big deal. Holiness is not a big deal. I love worshiping God. I love serving Him. Serving God is still beautiful to me. Serving the King of Kings. My wife and I was driving down the road just the other day and we were talking about it and tears began to course down my cheeks. I said, baby, God's been good to both of us. She agreed. I said, serving the Lord is the greatest thing that God's ever let me do. I appreciate Him letting me preach. I don't deserve to be in this pulpit tonight. I'd much, just as much enjoy being out there shouting with the preacher as you have been. But God's been good to this old boy. And it's not because I'm smart. But somebody knew how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Cast a shadow of influence over my life. And it put a love for God in my heart. And I love holiness. And I love preachers. And I love church. What do you do for fun? I go to church. What do you do in your spare time? Oh, I like to pray and read the Bible. I'm not being superficial or trying to be some kind of a shallow religious phony. I'm not. Garza, this is what I live for. I told my wife, I said, I've seen people walk out the door, Brother Wheeler, and I, I don't know why they walk out and do what they do. I can't understand that. And I remember one time when I got down on the floor and I said, God, I don't know why either. I said, God, what else could I have done? God spoke to me said, they love you and they love my church, but they never fell in love with me. And if they don't love me, you can't help them. And so that it is with the carnal mind. Convictions in this place right now. We've shouted. We've praised God. But right now the Holy Ghost wants to move. I, I want to focus in on some of these young men and some of these young ladies. Live above that carnal line. Get you a prayer life. If you really fall in love with God, I promise you it's not hard serving the Lord. I got the Holy Ghost when I was eight years of age. God's protected me and been good to me. But I can honestly say all these many years later, this is still the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. Not just because I'm preaching tonight. Maybe we ought to give time let these guys move these chairs. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.
This is where I want to end up tonight. I want to reach. I want to reach for somebody. I really feel like I need to reach for somebody. I've seen backsliders walk out on God, and the devil would promise them all kinds of things. One particular man comes to mind. He didn't have two nickels to rub together. Him and his wife were on drugs. God filled him and his wife with Holy Ghost, delivered them, came to church, served God, were tremendous soul winners for nine years. He was so blessed that he got a job offer. He lost his soul. In three years' time, he made over a million dollars. Today, and I still, I love them like a son and daughter. I visited them. I prayed with them. I've cried with them. They lost their house. They lost their business. They lost everything. They finally were able to scrape together just a couple of weeks ago a thousand dollars to buy a dilapidated trailer, and they're living in without water. Just a few days ago, she was placed in the hospital, not expected to live. She's barely, not even forty. My wife and I went to pray for her. This is the insanity of sin prayed for when she walked when we walked out one of the ladies in the church was there attending to her helping her and she told the lady she said when I have this next surgery I hope it doesn't leave a scar because she said I really look pretty in a two piece and she's going to die and sin has so blinded her eye She's not thinking about hell. She's thinking about what she looks like in a bikini. The insanity of sin. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's young people that the devil has caught the line out. He's tried to tell you that the boy is out there, the girl is out there, that fun is out there somewhere. But sin is insanity. I've watched young people walk out and come back with such scars. And they had such potential. But I look at them and I think, dear God. Sin is a killer. Sin is a killer. It's insane. I'm reaching for people here tonight. If you're a visitor here and you don't have the Holy Ghost, the devil has lied to you and told you all kind of things and you know it hasn't come true. But everything in this book is true. Would you like to have the Holy Ghost tonight? Are there any young people that would like to reconsecrate their life to God tonight? I wonder if there's any saints that would like to step up a little level and come on and just eat a little spiritual food and get your spiritual sanity back. Saints, I want you to pray. Those of you that are are full of the Holy Ghost, would you pray right now? The Holy Ghost is moving.